Hello, today I'm going to show you guys how I pack orders. This video will lean more on the how I pack orders and not so much on the how I run my business, especially as I'm someone who's still learning the ropes. If you're new here, hello, hi, my name is Radia Rahman. I'm a Bengali American illustrator born and raised in New York City. I graduated from the School of Visual Arts with my BFA in illustration in May of this year and opened an online storefront two months after that. In the past, I have sold a variety of my artwork, including pins, prints, silkscreen items, at art fairs through my school and also at local art stores in my neighborhood. Since I had some extra prints left over, I thought why not open an online storefront and share my work with the rest of the world. I opened my storefront through Squarespace on July 8th this year. Since I already built my website through Squarespace, I thought why not just add the e-commerce plan? Not sponsored, but Squarespace if you're watching, sponsor your girl. Since then, I have had over 17,000 orders. Hello, editing Radia here. I meant to say 1,700, as in 1,700, not 17,000 people because that is a drastically different number, but 1700 is still quite a lot. That is all. Now back to the video. That is a span of six months since then, and that doesn't even include the orders that I took through DMs before that. So when I started off my store, I had about 10 to 20 orders per week, and then it became 50 to 100, and then 200 to 500. I am the sole proprietor to my business. I don't have a studio assistant yet, so it can be very overwhelming to keep track of so many things all while still creating. So today I wanted to share my process of how I pack orders from start to finish. I will also share the eco-friendly supplies that I use as I am trying to transition my shop to be plastic free. So let's start off with what kinds of things I have to pack. I have to pack prints, pins, silkscreen shirts, handmade jewelry, and a variety of things. Some orders are easier to pack than others, and depending on what's in the order, I have to decide what type of mailer I'll be using. Now I wanna share what I use to package my orders. This is very important because I used to pre-package a lot of items, such as notepads, pins, print packs, and it was creating a bunch of unnecessary waste. I would use plastic sleeves for a few things at first, then I ditched the plastic and I went for biodegradable plastic, so I started to use cellulose-based compostable plastic sleeves. The ones that I got were from Elevate Packaging, and now I'm starting to use glassine bags which are made out of paper. I occasionally use this pink recycled tissue paper from Nashville Wraps to wrap some of the prints that were in the compostable clear sleeve. I take into consideration what the opening experience will be like for my customers. I would add the tissue paper as an element of surprise since the compostable sleeves were clear so you could see the print, so upon opening it, the tissue paper is kind of this gift wrap. Since then, I have been using these glassine bags, which are semi-transparent, so I feel like there is no need for that extra tissue paper. At some point, I would love to make my own custom tissue paper designs, which I might offer as a gift wrap add-on. Now, let's talk about mailers. I hold on to every single mailer that I get whenever there is a package coming into my home. You are literally getting free packaging every single time instead of throwing it out where it will inevitably end up in a landfill or immediately jumping to recycle them, I like to reuse and repurpose them as much as I can. Obviously, I do buy new mailers, but the first thing that I will do is reuse any pre-existing ones that I have. I have this big bag filled with a bunch of mailers and extra bags. Right here, I have a huge stack of poly mailers, bubble mailers, and rigid mailers from when I order from other places. All I do is remove my information from the labels by marking it out or peeling off the sticker. And I know we are all guilty of this particular mailer. I don't use Amazon to buy gifts. I use it to buy equipment, if that makes any sense. If you have a mailer that looks like this, what I will do is that I will package my items in here and then I will wrap it in some craft paper that I've saved from orders. If an order has reused materials, I will put this sticker on it. I made these on my Rolo thermal printer. This is a design I made myself. I saw Lee Ellickson do this to create custom stickers for her print pack, and I thought this was such a brilliant idea with materials I already had, instead of wasting extra money on getting a custom sticker made. Lee Ellickson also has not only one, but two videos on eco-friendly packaging. I will link them down below, and it is a great resourceful video of her comparing different materials and also different companies. I buy a majority of my shipping supplies from Eco Enclose. I buy their paper padded mailers and a variety of sizes of their rigid mailers. They also came out with this really cool paper apparel mailer, which replaces the traditional plastic poly mailer for clothing. I get these in cases of 100 to 250, so the price per mailer breaks down to about 50 cents to a dollar depending on the size. Some of the larger mailers are from Amazon because Eco Enclose just doesn't carry really, really large sizes, so there are some 11 by 17 prints that I have that need the 
13 by 18 millers and they don't carry that size. I'm actually going to stop carrying such large prints because it's honestly a pain in the ass to pack and also those mailers, the really big mailers are almost $2 each. I buy mailers according to what the size of my products are instead of the other way around, if that makes any sense. And I'm not mentioning any sizes because this is just the sizes that accommodate for the size of prints that I have. And it's better to measure your products first and figure out what sizes you need instead of buying things and then realizing it doesn't fit. I also have envelopes for sticker orders. I got these from a store called City Papery in Manhattan. I think you can also get these off of like envelopes.com or I can also suggest jam paper. I use washi tape, which is made out of rice paper to package my orders. I have this little tape cutter doodad here. This is by Kokuyo and you can roll it out and tear it off like that. I also have this pink tape dispenser. I don't remember what the brand is, but I do remember I bought it from Kinokuniya bookstore. As for my washi tape, I get all of my stationery locally sourced through my favorite stationery shop. They are a small Taiwanese owned business called Yoseika Stationery and they are located in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. They also have a storefront which I'll link down below if you would like to support them. I also have a hefty roll of craft paper tape from Eco Enclosed. This is the pressure sensitive adhesive one. I find that this one saves me more time than the water activated one. So when I'm packaging the orders, I will run the tape across the edge just for a bit of extra security. I do not use cellophane tape. It is plastic. I also know that there is a biodegradable cellophane tape. I would much rather stick to the paper tape. I highly dislike plastic. Now it's time for personalization. You can indeed run your shop eco-friendly while making it cute. Am I tempted by aesthetic pink bubble mailers? Of course, but you know what's more aesthetic? Preserving nature so that future generations can enjoy it too. And not me contributing plastic to the environment. For my mailers, I use a custom stamp. I got this done through Etsy. I'll leave the supplier that I used below, but it's a little bit finicky, so I think I need to make another one. This is a self-inking stamp. It's this thing over here. This has my name and my logo, and I also have a do not bend stamp. In the future, I wanna make my own custom designs for the do not bend one. I like to use stamps instead of stickers because stickers are an extra expense and it's also unnecessary waste to be created. Stamps are also a lovely cost efficient way of branding your mailers. You can also refill the ink pad, this plate right here. You can slide it out and instead of swapping out that plate completely, you can actually get ink pad refills. This is by the brand Shachihata and I also got these from Yoseika Stationery. I will refill the ink pads whenever they're running a little dry. Each order comes with with a business card and my contact information on the back, a little thank you card with instructions on the back as to what can be composted, recycled, and also reused. And then just for fun, I like to have a seasonal freebie sticker. I got these business cards printed through Fireball Printing and I got my vinyl sticker printing done through Vinyl Disorder. For every order, I like to add a personalized thank you note for whoever is receiving it. I just write these on some sticky notes. I like to use these flower shaped ones. It's the first thing I do a day before I start packing orders just so that it makes the packing process a little faster. I use this empty portfolio case to stick these on so that they're very easy to peel off when I need them. I will write these down in order of invoice number from oldest to newest. That way they're not a mess and my brain isn't fried. I hope I can continue to do this because this was easier to manage when I had less than 100 orders, but right now I have to do 700 notes and this is barely half of what I have completed at the moment, which I am very, very grateful for, but it's something that I have to consider if I'm still going to be able to do. I operate out of my bedroom, which is strictly divided in half, but honestly, it is more studio than it is bedroom at this point. I do most of the order packing on my desk, but I will use my bed as a surface to have everything laid out. I'll lay down a blanket and start to lay out my prints, pins, my glassine bags, tissue paper, essentially everything within hand's reach. I store most of my prints in this paper tray from Ikea. Some of the smaller prints are stored in photo boxes and the larger prints are in a big portfolio case. In this drawer, I have all of my stickers organized which I take out and put on top of the drawer. On the floor, I keep a box filled with pre-stamped mailers, excess cardboard paper, bubble wrap, and mailers I will reuse. Also adjacent to these mailers, I will have a bagu filled with more bagus and tote bags so that when I put the orders off to the side, I can start packing them into here. My desk is my main packing area. I love this desk. It's height adjustable. It was a wonderful gift from Flexi Spot, which is the brand. They did give me a discount code. So if you want to get one for yourself, there is a link in the description. I use my iPad with this Capcom stand and that way I can easily look up orders using the Squarespace e-commerce app. Here is what the setup looks like. I'll have bags and mailers on the floor and then I will have my entire bed space 
filled with prints and products. And I'll have the glassine bags, compostable clear sleeves, and tissue paper over here. This is where the packing gets done. First thing I will do is wipe it down and then start packing orders. This is my wonderful studio assistant, Kuni. He's not that helpful, but he's here for moral support. He also blesses the packages one by one. Isn't that right? Now let's get to the actual packaging. Another way I make the workflow faster just before packing is I lay out my business cards, then the thank you card and the freebie sticker out on my desk. And that way I'm not having to grab these individually as I'm packing orders. Advice for all y'all, work smarter, not harder. This is how I package shirts. I print all of my shirts at home. This is a silk screen design. These are Gildan shirts. I have been looking into purchasing shirts by Bella Canvas because they are made in Los Angeles. So they're made in America and I do not want to contribute any further to fast fashion by purchasing Gildan, which is made in Nicaragua and they don't have any transparency on whether or not they're ethically made, but Bella Canvas does. And also looking into whether or not I might want to thrift these shirts in the future. So I fold up these shirts so that the design is visible and the only thing I wrap this with is a sheet of tissue paper. This is I believe a 20 inch by 30 sheet of tissue paper. I designed these fabric care cards that come with any product that is made out of fabric and these are included with the shirts. There's no special way of folding this. I kind of just make sure that all of the edges are wrapped up nicely and that the shirt is securely inside the tissue paper. I use washi tape to seal the edges. It's just as simple as that. I don't think shirts need any type of plastic packaging. All I do is use this recycled tissue paper. And the last step to make sure I know which size is inside is to write them on these little stickers right here. I'm just using up the remainder of these label stickers that I got from the 99 cent store. And I write the size and all I do is stick it on there. And there, it's ready to go. Right now I am packing Lexi's order. This has a ornament and a cat toy. So some very irregular shapes. I'm just going to use a sheet of tissue paper to wrap these up. So I'll include the business card and the extras. I'll tuck in the sides before I tuck in the last edge. Then I put the thank you note on top. I've decided to use some of these old manila envelopes from Staples that I had on hand. And because this isn't cushioned in any way, I'm going to use some excess craft paper and then wrap this so it's a little bit more cushioned. And I'll just slide it into here. I'm gonna take down the edge. and write the order number on the outside. And then I put it in the pile with the rest of the completed orders. Now here is an example of someone who has ordered a variety of things. We have prints and zines, stickers, ornaments, and pins. So initially what I'll do is I'll have all of the prints packaged first. I'll then slip it into a glassine bag. I'll slide any other flat products into there. I'll also put in the stickers and my business card. I'll seal the top. And then the sides. Then I'll slide the ornaments and the pins into another glassine bag. I'll have the pins facing down. And now you're probably wondering how this doesn't dent the prints underneath. The reason I save cardboard is exactly for this moment. I'll cut down some excess cardboard and then I'll tape the prints to it. I'll put the thank you note on. I'll grab a mailer that'll fit the prints. And on the opposite side, I will slip in the ornaments and the pins, and that way they won't dent into the prints. All I have to do now is seal this up. And then I'll write the order number on the back. This is a order for Janet. This includes a shirt and a sticker. In this type of situation, all I'll do is combine the sticker with my business card and just slip it into the shirt. I feel like there's no need to put those stickers in extra packaging. I'll put the thank you note on top, and then I'll slip it into one of the paper apparel mailers by Eco and Clothes.
This order is for Clara. This one is fairly easy since it contains a bunch of small flats. These are some holiday cards and a small print. All that I have to do is slide these into a small glassine bag, flip in my business card, and I'll seal the top. Then I'll put on the thank you note and I'll slide it into the rigid color. This is an order for Maddie. This is also another complex order. It contains a large print, print pack, some earrings in this box, a pin, and some stickers. What I'll do first is put the print in a compostable sleeve. Unfortunately, I can't find glassine bags big enough to hold 11 by 17 prints, so the compostable clear sleeves are the way to go for now. I'll slip in the print pack, the stickers and the business card, and then I'll seal the top edge with some washi tape. This is the instance where I will bring out the tissue paper and wrap the prints. It's a little bit tricky to do because the print is so big. It's also the reason why I'm starting to phase out my larger prints. I'm just folding the edges, then I'll tape it down. In this instance, I'm going to use some bubble wrap that I've held onto to wrap the earrings and the pen. I'll apply the thank you note. Then I'll take my largest size of mailer. This is the 13 by 18 size and I will shimmy it in there. And then I will place this in the middle of the mailer so that it stays cushioned and it's not competing with the rigidity of the mailer. And I'll seal it up. For some of the larger mailers, I did get a sticker for these just because the stamp was very small in comparison to the size of this mailer. And then I will write the invoice number and put it aside. This is in order for Shari. They ordered a ornament, a pin, earrings, and some stickers. I think what I will do is lightly wrap the ornament in some tissue paper just so none of the other items get caught in the glitter or the bow. Then I'll take these stickers with the business cards and I will slide it into a glassy bag in the ends and the pin. I'll seal the top. Add the thank you note. I'm going to need to pull this back to this so it'll fit into one of the padded mailers. These mailers have a really strong adhesive, so I don't double up on the tape for this one. The invoice number on the back, and we're done. Sometimes people will order just stickers from my store, so what I'll do is I'll pack them with my business card, then I'll slip it into a little glassine envelope. I'll tape the edge down, apply the thank you note, and then I'll put it into a big envelope rather than a rigid mailer since I use rigid mailers for prints. And I do stamp it with a do not bend, but since these are vinyl stickers, not much damage will be done if they get bent. Then I tape the edges of the envelope down and I'll write the invoice number on the back. I like the size of these envelopes because the four by six labels can fit on the back. Now let me show you what a sticker order looks like through stamps. In my shop, if anyone would like to get just stickers, I have a cheaper shipping option where I can refund the difference if they leave in the order notes please send via stamps. And this is especially helpful for my international customers where the shipping can be quite expensive from America. So if someone would like to just buy stickers, then I can easily send them out in an envelope with a stamp. I price this based off of the price of the stamp and also the cost of the envelope. This particular order is for Jennifer. All I do is take the stickers, my business card, and then I slide it into a glassy envelope. Envelope, seal the top, add the thank you note, slip it into the envelope. I have these envelopes pre-addressed with my PO box address. Then I'll put the stamp in the corner and I will handwrite their address right here. This I don't have to drop off at the post office, this I can drop off at the corner USPS bins on my block. I should also mention that I double check that the envelope is either under or over an ounce because if it's under an ounce, then that's fine because I'll only just one stamp. However, if it's over an ounce, that means I need to go back in and add extra postage. And just to show you guys, here are some examples of packaging I reused. 
All right, so now that your orders are packed, time to figure out shipping. A lot of people get scared of shipping. All you need to know to ship anything is where it's going, what the dimensions are, and how much it weighs. I use a shipping platform called Shippo, which connects to my Squarespace. I know there are other people that use different platforms like stamps.com or ShipStation. I just decided to use Shippo because when I started out, they had a pay-as-you-go plan instead of having a monthly subscription with them. I don't have to worry about filling out any addresses because all of the orders from Squarespace automatically get transferred into Shippo. I use USPS to ship my orders. I use the first class mail option, which is the cheapest option. In addition to that, I have a PO box. That way I can have a business return address without it being my personal home address. I save the dimensions of my mailers as presets. So when I am ready to enter the weight, all I have to do is select it from a drop down list and select what mailer it is. That way it's easier and I don't have to fill out that information every time. I use this postal scale, which also flips up for taller mailers. After I am done packing a batch of orders, I will weigh each one, round it up to the whole ounce and write that number underneath the invoice outside. That way I can reference which order is which and how much it weighs. For domestic orders, it's very simple and straightforward. For international orders, the only struggle is filling out a customs form, which only takes one to two minutes. As for the cost of shipping, this can vary depending on who you're using to ship and also how you're choosing to ship those items. Personally, I ship my products based on weight. For my shop, domestic orders start at $5 and internationally it starts at $11. This price differs based on the distance it's traveling and the weight. I know some people do flat rate, so the weight doesn't matter, but flat rate actually is way more expensive. And I wouldn't want my customers paying anywhere around $20 to $40 just to get something shipped to them. My shipping cost includes the base price of the shipping and the cost of materials. You need to factor in the cost of your shipping materials. Those materials cost money out of your pocket, and some people will either factor in that cost into the product itself or have that be included in the shipping price. Personally, I feel like it makes the most sense to have that price being factored into the shipping cost and the shipping is to be paid by the customer. If you don't do this, you're gonna end up losing money and that's not good. Some people offer free shipping and this can get tricky. Now I'm not talking about big corporations that have free shipping deals. I'm talking about small creators such as myself. For example, let's say this print is $15 with $5 shipping. Now what if I told you this print was $20 with free shipping? Which one sounds more appealing? The free shipping option does sound more appealing, but that's because I decided to factor in that cost into the price of the product itself. Either way, some way, somehow, you are still paying for that shipping even if it's being shipped for free. I don't like to do that. It feels weird to me and I want to have full transparency in the shipping cost itself. To determine what the shipping costs are to different states and countries, I know all of those shipping platforms will have a rate chart to show you how much it costs to ship to different zones. That chart is what I use to reference my pricing. Shippo will automatically automatically send a shipping confirmation with the tracking once the labels are printed. Once I'm done entering all those numbers, I will print my labels on this handy dandy Rolo thermal printer, which I've covered in stickers. This printer does not use ink. It uses heat to print on heat sensitive labels. It's also really, really fast. And that way you're not spending time or energy or ink printing labels through your regular printer and trying to glue or tape down the labels. This bad boy was about $200, so it was an investment, but it has already since then paid itself off. I get a roll of a thousand zero waste shipping labels from Eco Enclosed. This is the four by six size. Half of this is gone already. I like these because they are adhesive and the release backing paper itself is also recyclable. I will manually fan fold these because it's easier to print and this stand is also from Rolo. The reason I write the order number on the package is because when I print the labels, the order number gets printed on the corner and now it's just a matter of putting the labels on its respective mailer. If I have time, I will doodle on the mailer, but during a holiday rush like this, my priority is to drop these babies off at the post office ASAP. I used to carry tote bags filled with orders, but that really hurts my shoulders, so I invested in a wagon. I don't drive since I live in the city, so a wagon has been a huge help to drop off big batches of orders. Since they're already paid and ready, all I have to do is drop it off and I'm done. And to follow up with orders, I have a separate business email so people can contact me if there are any issues. My store has a FAQ section and a mission statement so people know exactly what to expect when they make an order through my shop. I also have a short shop info highlight on my Instagram. I keep a separate checking account just for my business and business expenses. That way it's easier when I have to do taxes. I do not know how to do taxes. Please don't ask me how to do taxes. I'm not an accountant and I have to get an accountant because I no longer have a day job. I am someone who is self-employed. However, Jordan Clark does have a great video on how to sell your art online and she brushes upon taxes. I'll link that video below if you guys wanna learn more about 
about that. Overall, that's really it. I asked you guys on Instagram what you guys wanted to see from this video, and I hope I was able to cover enough bases. This is just what has been working for me. This advice can also be applied to any small business. I just happen to be a full-time illustrator. As for advice, if you are a student, allow yourself to be a student. There are so many people I see on YouTube and on social media who are still either in high school or in college that have been balancing a shop and social media, and that's a great way to make extra income, but if it is taxing on your mental health, that is not efficient at all. When I was in college, I worked part-time on the weekends and I had class every single day of the week. I knew that if I opened an online shop while I was in school, I would be pulled in every each direction and I wouldn't be able to focus on my assignments. Now that I've graduated, I have way more time. I actually got laid off from my part-time day job in the middle of the pandemic. When that happened, I immediately went into full-blown panic, wondering if I would be able to find another day job or if I would pursue work in the field of illustration and wondering how the hell I was going to pay off my student loan debt. It took me two months to put my storefront together and I wanted this to provide me with supplemental income as I was searching for bigger work. Surprisingly enough, a day before I opened my shop, I landed a huge brand collaboration with Skullcandy. I elaborate more about that entire project in one of my previous vlogs. Working on that project was such a huge business and also having my social media grow gave me that confidence and also alleviated a lot of that anxiety. I did not expect my shop to grow this much and right now that is my biggest source of income. I'm making about three to four times more money than I did when I worked part-time and it is an absolute luxury and a blessing to be someone who can work from home, especially in the middle of a pandemic. A lot of people ask me how I did it, and honestly, there is no secret formula to how to grow a social media following or to get people to look at your work. I just kept making artwork that was true to myself and had meaning to me, and people just happened to gravitate towards it. There were also people asking if my work was for sale even before I had a shop, so there was an existing demand for my artwork. It's very easy to get consumed with wanting to open a shop or wanting to start a YouTube channel without taking into consideration how much energy you're going to pour into it. Obviously, it's a great way to make another source of income, but you have to take a step back and wonder if you are ready to handle that responsibility or if you're spreading yourself too thin. Especially as someone who is a professional illustrator, I have to look at my work and wonder if it's good or not. Not everything that I make is going to turn into a print. Not all of the things that I do are going to be monetized because that's just not healthy. You have to learn to be your own best critic. However, don't let any of these things discourage you. Not everyone has to have a shop or a YouTube or a Patreon to be successful. This just happens to be the things that work for me. I also work business to business and business to client, which is you guys. So by having a shop, people are more likely to be able to afford prints rather than originals. When I started my shop, I took accessibility into account. I grew up very low income, so I know exactly what it's like to not be able to afford artwork from your favorite artists. As for pricing, I reference pricing from other artists as well. I have definitely underpriced myself with a lot of handmade goods. Know your worth because people who really want to support you will still buy your stuff. Also, never question it in artist pricing. If you have companies like Urban Outfitters selling shirts for $60 without anyone questioning it, I don't see why artists can do the same, considering the amount of physical labor and time that goes into making designs and also getting that production done. This is also a great book on how to price your artwork. This is more so for commercial level illustration and graphic design. Fran has a very great video on referencing this book, so I'll link that below. I hope that this video has been helpful and makes the process seem a little less scary. If you are wondering where I manufacture certain things, I mentioned them throughout my previous vlogs, so definitely go check that out. If you haven't already, hit that like and feel free to subscribe. I wish you all the best of luck. Hope you guys are staying safe and I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye!